How's everybody doing this morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you may be watching from or attending from today? Everyone doing well? Okay, so I'm just going to let you know, I'm not the type of talker that just talks at you. So I am very much interactive and engaging. And so I will attempt to watch the chat and I will ask for feedback and participation. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. Let me know. Are you guys all okay with that? Perfect. Well, all right. All right. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the way that I approach training and presentations like that. I'm going to teach a bit and then I'm going to break you all out into doing a bit and then we'll come back and we'll do some reflection on that. And that will pretty much take us through the hour. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. So depending on how many people we have, we'll determine the breakout sessions, but I'm going to give you some strategy and some sort of best practices. And then you guys will have some opportunity to go off and do that. And I'll float the rooms and then we'll come back together. Okay. All right. So let me share my screen. And while I'm sharing my screen, what I want to do is give you what ultimately be will be the thing that you guys will use inside of your breakout session. So I've got to get my camera, your faces all in the same place. Can everybody see my screen? Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Let me get the chat open and then I'm going to share with you all this guide. This is what you guys will use in the session and it's a prompt guide, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So before you jump into that, let's just talk a little bit about strategy. So for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Sunday Gardner. I am founder and operator of Online Travel Boss, which is an online travel school or an online school where I teach travel advisors how to launch and operate uh, profitable travel businesses. I have about a year ago launched Travel Pro Suite, which is a software that will allow travel advisors to manage operations and marketing. And so today what we're going to be talking about is what everybody really cares about, which is how to get leads and automate the lead gen and follow-up process. So before we get started, what I'd love to get from you all is, do you all already have some sort of mechanism that gets people to raise their hand and say, I'm interested? Just let me know in comments or if you come off of chat, come off of mute. Do you already have something in place that allows people to say, yes, I am interested in you? It's wildly quiet and I don't see any chatting. So you can come off of mute. Um, Gundy, what? hi, it's Karen. Hi. What specifically, can you give an example of what you mean? I guess, I'm, assu I'm assuming we all close sales. So we must have a way of having people tell us they're wanting to proceed or that they want information. But what do you mean specifically? Thank you, Karen, for that. So what I mean by that is Karen jumps straight to the sale, which is what a lot of advisors do. They jump straight from buy my package, buy my service and spend money with me. But you really need to have something before that process to get people to say, yes, Karen, I'm even interested in your travel advice, your services. Who are you, Karen? Why do I even want to meet you or get to know you? That's called an opt-in offer. It's called a lead magnet. It's some sort, I call it a stranger offer. When I teach, I call it a stranger offer. It's an introduction to you on your website. That's a really good place to have something that says, hey, when somebody finds you, let's say they Google and you come up in a Google search, if you're fortunate enough to do that, your website should have something that says, hey, stop, Give me your email address. Here's that thing. So I'm talking about what's the introduction offer that you have that says, I am about you, client, and this is why you want to find out about me. Is that, do you guys have those types of offers? And I'm going to take the silence as no, you don't. This is the first part of the business. So I'm going to pause because I'm a fast talker. So actually, I'm not a fast talker. I just talk really fast. Because there was a difference if you guys know, like people who talk really fast and don't really say anything. I don't think I'm a fast talker. I just talk really fast. 
All right. So I'm looking at chat and seeing what you guys are saying. So some of you guys are saying that no lead magnet set up only by email, but how do you get people to join your email? And this may be a thing that says everybody, you don't have an introduction offer. You probably are just selling. You're not thinking about how to get people interested in your travel business. And I will tell you, this is the one thing that you can automate fairly quickly once you come up with the offer. So what I'm going to do now is just level set as to what this all means, what I'm talking about, because I'm going to try not to talk jargon, but really talk to you. It's just basic. When you meet somebody, right, like let's say WTL, when you guys first met each other, right, you came together, you introduced yourself and you said who you were what you stand for, what you specialize in. And we want to do that introduction on autopilot. I call it shaking hands and kissing babies. I want to be able to shake hands and kiss babies on autopilot with actually physically having to do that. Wouldn't you guys want to do that as well? Like to be able to get your brand in front of people without you actually having to meet them all the time. Because first of all, I got like stuff going on. And many of you advisors may also work full-time jobs. And you don't really have a lot of time to shake a lot of hands and kiss a lot of babies to introduce your brand. So you need an offer or something that does that introduction for each. That is the first opportunity that you all have and each of you all have to automate the lead generation process. And that really all lead generation is an introduction to you and your business and why someone cares. Okay. All right. Let me read some of these comments that we're getting. So someone says we have a join a waitlist button. Okay, so waitlist button is a good concept. The problem is when you meet a stranger, why do they want to join your waitlist? What's why? There's nothing in it for them. You know why you're the bomb.com, but they don't know why you're the bomb.com. So you've got to give them a reason for them to say, oh my God, she gets me or he gets me. That's all women here since so she gets me. Right. And that is what an offer will do for you if you structure it correctly. And it really has some value to the particular person that you want to help get out of town. All right. So what we're going to go over today is we're going to go over. I'm going to explain to you what the automated lead generation system is and really what follow up looks like. I'm going to talk to you about this marketing term called the funnel and break it down so it's pretty simple um, for you. Then we're going to go into our breakout session and then we're going to have some review and reflection time. Oh. All right, five minutes on God, right? Because I'm already 10 minutes in. Five minutes, I'm going to tell you what automation means to you. Because I think it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And we assume it's some sort of magic wand that's going to save our life. And if you do it right, it can save a part of your life in terms of time and effort that it takes you to do a thing. And so what we want to do today is the thing that we want to automate is the lead generation process of how I get my business, my services in front of my ideal client without me having to physically be present. That's the automation that we're going to talk about today. All right. And you know, what one of these myths or concerns that I wrote here is, is that people are like, it's impersonal, it's automated, and I need to actually shake those hands. I need to actually introduce myself every single time for it to be a connection. And that's so not true right now. That, that that's just not true. Just chew, you know, you you are actually inundated by lead magnets probably 24 seven and you don't even realize it through if you're on any social media channel, you look at your Facebook feed, every third option in your feed is some sort of ad. Oftentimes those ads are lead magnets. Those are offers to get you to stop the scroll and say, I'm interested in that thing. And you probably interact with a lot of those things. That literally is lead magnet on automation, right? Attraction on automation. They're using ads to present to you an offer that is important to you. But they hope it's important to you. You click on it, you download it, you buy it, and you get into their web. And that's what we ultimately want to do. Before I go on, does anyone have any questions about that and what we're going to automate and what we're going to talk about today? Any questions? Now, Karen, did that answer your question? I, I believe so. I'm still listening. I'm trying to figure out whether you mean 
because you didn't respond, I I had put up, we have a MailChimp form on the web where people can respond and say they want more info or to set up a meeting with us. And also a set up a meeting button, which goes into our calendar or sets up an actual phone or Zoom meeting. Are those lead magnets or are those still not? Those are processes to get to capture contact information. Correct. That, but they don't, but they're not putting something out there saying, here's a, I think you're wh where you're leading us. So that is correct. Okay. So you've got, uh, you've got uh, let's say you cut the recipe or you've got the, you've got the pot to capture people into your system, right? By having a form. So you have a form that gets email addresses. You have a calendar that books people's appointment, but you don't have a reason why somebody would fill out the form. Does that make sense? I'll, I believe so. That is it. I mean, I'm it's not like a, it's the nurture sequence part of it, or does that come after? That comes after. So that's the second part. So we're going to go through each of those steps right now in terms of, because you guys, I and this is really good. I'm glad that I stopped because you've got pieces of it, right? But what we want to do is we will all put it all together. And that is really where the beauty of automation happens. If you have an offer that somebody says, yes, I'm interested, you need a form to collect their email address. You need a nurture sequence to deliver them the offer and then continue the conversation. Make sense? It is the, is, so the words that we have that have them go into the form are start planning your safari now. Yeah, but even how did you get somebody to get to the form? They had to come onto the website. They had, but how did they get to the website? That's the question. Yes. That is exactly right. So again, you have the end, but you don't have the beginning. So you're hoping that people, I don't know what your, maybe your website has got great SEO and people are finding you naturally. But if that's not the case, oftentimes we have to drive people or create a reason for people to get to the website. That is what that offer will do is give them a reason to click to then get to the website that says, hey, get your Safari guide here, collect the email address, then do a follow-up sequence. Make sense, everybody? Yep. We're grossing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Automation, literally, that's all automation does. It does all of that for you. You set it up. Now there's work that you have to do on the front end. You have to set it up. You have to think through all these steps. But automation takes care of all of that. It takes care of the presentation of the offer, the collection of the email, the delivery of what you send you would do, and then the ongoing nurturing. So let's talk a little bit about that. But before we dive in, what I didn't tell you is that I am beginning to, 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 to define myself as the, the champion of AI for the travel advisor. And what I find to be the most difficult thing for travel advisors is how do you, where do you start? What do you say? What kind of offer should you create? What should be in the follow-up sequence? What should be on the page? All of those things. And this is where AI comes in. So before AI, this is how I used to teach it. I'd be like, okay, go to Pinterest to get inspiration because Pinterest has all sorts of great stuff in terms of inspiring, in terms of different types of offer. I used to tell people, Google it, right? You have a Tell me your ideal client. Let's come up with some brainstormings. And I'd have all these mastermind brainstorming sessions. AI really takes all that away for us. So we're going to use AI. That guide that I gave you is really AI on steroids because I've already written the prompts for you for each of the steps that we're going to talk about. We won't have the time to go through each of those, but I will set it up for you. You can do that on your own. So when it comes to this sort of ide ideation and coming up with ideas, you'll have a resource that you can use. All right, so let's talk about what the steps are. The first thing is you need to know who your who is. And so what I mean by that, I feel like Dr. Seuss, right? Who's your who is it that you want to help get out of town? Who are the people that you want to work with? A lot of advisors are like, I want to work with everybody. I want to work with anyone who will pay me. I want to work with anyone who wants to go to Africa. And the reality is when you don't have your who defined, it becomes very difficult for you to identify and talk to them specifically to create offers that are unique to them. Marketing is all about targeting. 
Now, don't get me wrong. You can target multiple different people. You can have different audiences. But what I always tell people when I start working with them is pick an audience that you want to really build a strong marketing message to. Commit to that for at least 12 to 18 months because then it, it just, that's just, I've got the type of coach that's, oh, you get it done in 30 days because that's just BS. You can't. It, it takes time for you to develop the message, for you to develop the systems and develop that consistency. So what I'd like you guys to do is type right now, who is your who? Like just off the cuff. And I'm not looking for demographics. Like I don't care, 35. Like I, I we do ultimately, but tell me who your demographic is. Uh, it's a demographic, who your who is. Who do you want to help get out of town? Give me some descriptions in comments. You guys can come off of mute. So we do still have some time. Who are the people that you want to work with to help them get out of town? That was me Sunday that put you on the uh, comments. Just I'm here. <laughs> yeah, all of you, are, all of you on the call are my that's right. All And that's right. So her who in travel advisors, women specifically, women. And not just travel advisors, though. The women's industry, well. Sorry, I'm travel advisors. You're bigger than that. Adventurous, curious uh, travelers is, I think that's Diane. My eyes are. Diana. Yeah. Diana. My, I am a woman of a certain age these days. My eyes are even older than that. People interested in having soft adventure experiences. Okay, perfect. Women over 40 who want to feel better in their bodies. Okay. So these are great starting points for. But what I will tell you, if you guys also let me know how many of you guys are into AI, like how many of you guys are using AI right now in your business? Just let me know. Yes. Dabbling. Yes. All right. What I'm going to tell you is without a clear definition of who your ideal client is or target audience is another term that you may hear. The, the output that you get from AI is usually very generic and trash, trashy. Like it's not a value to you. And that's because you haven't helped set context. And so one of the first parts to that context study is having a really clear definition of who you want to work with. And that is more than just age. It's more than just sex. It's more than just profession. It includes characteristics like What's preventing them from getting out of town themselves? What are their pains? What are their challenges? What do they want to accomplish when they do get out of town? Why can't they do it themselves? Why are you uniquely um, positioned to help them? So it's really important that this part of your business is well-defined, particularly when using AI or crafting messages. If you find that you're not connecting with people in your marketing, it's because you're not speaking directly to the type of person that you want to help. And that the stronger and the more defined that you can make that, the easier it is for you to create social media posts, stranger offers that connect, titles that connect, offers that have meaning, packages, services that cater to that ideal client. The one thing that you want people to look at when they see your stuff is like, she gets me. She totally gets me. And it starts with having a really well-defined ideal client brief. All right. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to dive into that. But what I will do is I will give you some pointers when I do show you the prompt and things for you to consider there. But what you guys have started with and what you've given as your example, somebody said healthcare professionals. That's really a good starting point. But there's a lot of different healthcare professionals. Is it the service is like if I just pick that one? There's administrators. There's the people who are in the trenches. There are emergency healthcare providers. There's the insurance companies, there's so many different facets. So really trying to narrow that down in terms of what you need and what that person looks like is really what the who definition is about. Okay. The more specific you can be about who that is, when you put it into AI, the better your results are going to be. And I'm going to show you that in a really quick pass. But here's some things that you want to consider. What would they be interested in terms of a destination? But I'm going to even say... I'm going to back up just a little bit. If you are really clear about your who, you can take them anywhere in the world you want to. So if you're interested in Africa today and tomorrow you're interested in the Caribbean, God forbid, but if that's your only, but that's what you want to focus on, 
you can do that if you nail in who it is that you want to help. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to pause there for a second because the ideal client is probably the second most difficult thing for advisors and people in the industry to get their arms around. Any questions on that? I mean, I just thought I'd mention that we've got just in terms of people on the call today, we've got people like, I'm just thinking actually Rhonda would be a good example of someone who's, you're very specifically focused on Columbia because so she, she's based in Columbia and brings people to Columbia and her clients would be um, direct consumers, I, I believe, but also um, uh, tour, op yeah, tour operators and travel advisors. So she works B2B and B2C. Is that right, Rhonda? Yeah, correctly. We mostly work B2B. So sometimes I find this very hard because depending on who my B2B client is, they're selling to their specific demographics. So I think it's a very different way of marketing towards B2B than, than B2C. So I also market to be, so I'm marketing to travel advisors. And so what you want to do, because there's all sorts of travel advisors in different journeys or different spaces in their journey, you have new travel advisors, you have people who are hosted, you have people who are experienced that maybe they just recently became independent. So really it's about identifying the types of of businesses and where they may be in their journey of their business that you want to do. So let's say, for example, and I'm just going to pick on you, Rhonda, because uh, you've been called out specifically as if you, you are doing a destination, but let's say you want to work with advisors and the ideal client that you're working with are new advisors who have never, who are new to creating signature destinations right? That's a different market than somebody who's already been in maybe the luxury space and have been doing it for years. The type of marketing and the offer I would create for the new advisor would be different than the one who's experienced and is looking for maybe to do group trips because they already know how to do it. So that offer, that initial offer is going to be different. My first offer for the newbie may be like how to design, why Columbia is a great destination for your first signature trip. Whereas a group leader who, or an advisor who specializes in group, it's why have you thought about Columbia and why it's the best place to host a non-traditional type of group or something like that, right? But when I give you this prompt, it's going to help you. Your clarity is going to be creating these categories of businesses that you potentially want to create targeted messaging to. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Same thing for the people who are not doing B2B and you're doing consumers. Same thing. So someone wrote couples would tra we travel with other couples. Couples are broad. There's all sorts of types of couples, right? You're like, I just want anybody to pair together. Like I, I'm going to just pick this because I have a client who works with, we just finished a video visibility challenge last month. And that she works with LGBTQI and I think I those acronyms plus that's a very specific couple market, right? And so the language and the concerns of that market is different than maybe some other type of market. So again, we want to identify couples who have, the, let's not even pick relationship type. Let's talk about the state of like me and my husband, we're a couple, but we're about to be empty nesters. So my travel needs are different than I, they were when I had young children, right? So again, the more that you can be specific about your who and that what's going on in their life, the better your examples and the way that you're going to be able to get the kinds of offers that are going to resonate with them. All right. Step one is, so I'm going to, again, I'm spending a lot of time here because it's the most critical when it comes to the rest of the steps and particularly when it comes to legion and marketing is if you can create a boundary, and I know we're taught, let's be all inclusive, let's not create boundaries. When it comes to marketing, you need a boundary. You need a very clear boundary of who it is that you are trying to build a thing for. So again, specific as you can be. Then when we go to step two, it's really about, or step one, it's really about the ideas that are going to resonate or connect to the who and even potentially your destination. So in Rhonda's situation, she has a destination specialty, right? So it's going to be a marriage of the who she wants to work with, the type of business that she potentially wants to call in this particular automation and the destination. 
Now, the great thing about automation is she could have multiple funnels. It's not like she only could have one. She can have multiple, one that targets new advisors or people who are new to Columbia or people who are experienced advisors. And again, I'm thinking advisors. I don't mean to exclude any operators or anything like that, but the idea here is to define the journey of where your client is and then create a funnel and an offer that's going to be specific and speak specifically to them. Here in the generating offer ideas, this is probably, again, one of the hardest things for advisors to think about. What do advisors notoriously are creating travel guides, right? I think that's probably the most common offer that I see advisors create, which are destination travel guides. Don't get me wrong. I think that they're great offers. However, they're usually very generically presented to the ideal client. They're like, okay, I've got a, a guide for I'm, I'm going to pick Columbia, right? Here's a great travel guide. But why does anyone care? And really, when it comes to marketing, you've got to make the person care. You care desperately about the thing that it is, but your job as a marketer is to get them to care. And that's where creating an offer that really is connecting with your ideal client is going to be the case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you really quick using ChatGPT. So for the prompts, if you're not on ChatGPT Plus, my recommendation is to spend the $20 and get on Plus. If you're really not so good with copy, I would also recommend you get Claude, which is a, another AI tool that really, in my opinion, is killing the game on being able to really connect the content and write in a persuasive way when you give it its input. So I'm going to take the first prompt that's here, and this is the prompt that's going to actually create your idea. So I'm just going to copy that prompt, and I'm going to drop it into chat GPT. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Rondo's ideal audience. Which one would you like us to focus on? Which B2B business would you like us to focus on first? Just give me one. Maybe a travel advisor in the United States. Swings. Yeah, for friends. So you see the idea of that additional context, right? Because travel advisors is a little very broad. It definitely gives you a boundary in the United States. Who never is Columbia? Did you say Columbia? Yeah, it's C L O M B A. C C what? Yeah. C L O oh. and delete to you. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Just everybody, don't judge me for my spelling because you're going to see a lot of misspellings. <laughs> That's fine. Here and then what we're going to do. Ideal audience here. We're going to just copy that right there. And I could have left it here, but I'm just making it easier for myself just to do this here. All right. And now what this prompt is going to do is it's going to give you 10 ideas on how to 10 opt-in offer ideas. The way that this prompt is structured is going to give you titles, description, and why this will connect with your audience and some statistical information that you could potentially use. This is using the wrong year, so I would reset the year. This is how quickly it can do. So we're just going to take a look at these because really in this example, we're going to end up going through the rest of these steps. So. The next step is to develop, once you select the idea, is to actually develop the content. So you're going to pick an idea and then you're going to create the actual offer. So if it's a guide, a checklist or whatever these options are, you're going to select it, create it, and then you've got to create sales page content, which is going to be the web page that people, once you have, let's say, a social media post that's promoting it, it's going to lead them to the sales page. That's really what step three is. How do you get somebody to look at a piece of a, a, a page and say, oh, yeah, this is interesting. I, I want that. That's what the sales page does. So I think it was in Karen's example. She's like, got my website. 
that page needs to communicate the why somebody would give you the email address. Make sense? Okay. Step four is about once somebody gives you the fee, right, gives you their email address, you need to deliver. You need to give them something. You need to give them what they ask for, which is the offer, right, the download or whatever that is. And then you need to continue that conversation. And so we typically do three, I typically do five to seven emails. I'll find most advisors who are starting off, they'll do three emails, but it takes that much repetition for somebody, one, not to miss the email, two, for them to be like, oh, okay, she's not going away. Let me actually read that and to continue the conversation. So that follow-up sequence needs to not just be one email. It needs to be several emails to continue the conversation. Your okay. objective, yes. I wanted to ask a question, but I can ask it when you want. Do you want me to, do you want us to ask questions as we go or hold them? Yeah, no, you can ask me. Okay, I'm gonna just state something radical that Catherine already knows about me, but um, others may not, which is um, I've basically decided to come off email um, as much as possible. And I've migrated over to WhatsApp for pretty much all of my communication. So my curiosity is everything that you're speaking to is like about email automation or yeah, email automation. Janine, let me like substitute email with chat. So yeah. that's the beauty of technology now is that instead of delivering it in email, you could have a chat conversation, but it would still be the same type of concept where you need to follow up with, you need mm -hmm. to have an intense plan in mm -hmm. terms of what that conversation is going to be. Are you doing all of that chat WhatsApp manually or are you doing that through automation? We have automation set up, but I guess the point for me, the question was like, I've signed up for me personally, all of these other email lists of other mostly coaches, just because I think their content is interesting. And I always think, okay, yeah, rainy day, I'll read that later and see if I can get any ideas from it. And I end up never reading any of the emails. Yeah. So I just have a curiosity around, yeah, I guess you said you, you're doing this in other platforms too, presumably like Instagram or WhatsApp or... To, to, I don't know if I understand the question, but what I will say is that your follow-up can be in any type of format. It could be message. It could be, um, it really, there's two. There's three. You could do follow-up. When it comes to automation, I think there's really only two. But if the you can follow-up via phone, oh, really? like, there's phone automation that you can set up as well, where you're doing an automatic callback. When somebody does, I, some people in the real estate industry, they're doing that. Somebody downloads something, they're immediately calling them back. They're calling them with an IBR system. You could use chat through Facebook Messenger. You could do Instagram or WhatsApp, or you can do email. What I will say is email is not dead. And I think that a lot of people are inundated and you sign up for, because you are probably a natural marketer. You sign up like I'm, I'm on so much email list because I want to see what people are saying and what they're doing. But the natural consumer is not like us. Let, let me just say that email is still a very powerful channel to do follow up. And people, believe it or not, they still expect to get communication via email. What I would do is marry email with a messaging platform to double the, to double it down. Then the other platform is SMS, like you could do SMS. So I know if you're not in America, WhatsApp is definitely a, a better uh, channel, but WhatsApp, if any sort of messaging platform, and I'm including text messaging as well as a delivery mechanism on the a follow up. Does that answer, Janine, your question? Perfect. All right. So follow up, really the channel by which you follow up to Janine's point can be email. I say email because it's the easiest for most people to grasp. I think that you need to be a little bit more savvy to do a message because there's a lot more definition that you need to do to be able to get the response and intent from an automation perspective. But all of those channels will work. And then once you build that through step four, your last step is to be in the launch and promotion. Now you can organically try and promote your thing, but I like paying for it and 
and the reason I like paying for it is not because I got a whole bunch of money is because I can just pay. It d does the work for me. It's just like it's getting it's targeting the people I want and it's getting leads on my list. And it's the, the, the flow is just working. That really is the power. Organic strategies are really good. But I say you you sacrifice you, you, nothing in life is for free. So if you're not paying for it with money, you're going to pay for it in time when it comes to organic methods. All right. So let me show you the results of what a prompt that we did. And then I'm going to let us break out. All right. Let me see what I missed. Are the rules on WhatsApp not prohibited for automation? Do you need a specific type of WhatsApp account to have the permissions to send messages to leads? And so the business WhatsApp, so our tool, and I'm sure that there are other tools beyond ours, integrates with WhatsApp and WhatsApp is owned by Facebook and Facebook does have a 24 hour message limitation, interaction limitation when it comes to automation. And what that means is that once you, once a person interacts with you, you have 24 hours to have that uh, interaction stay live, else you won't be able to interact with them. Does that make sense? That is on the business and on the WhatsApp page. Who is that? Sally, did that answer your question? Are there any other types of landing pages than websites? Yeah, there. Facebook has a lead form, which acts like a landing page. It's a miniature. It keeps you all within the platform, but it's the same concept. So there are other alternatives than having a landing page proper. You can do what's, like I said, like a lead form. I think even WhatsApp now has got that, but you can create, which would be many sort of landing pages that will present the offer and then give people the opportunity to do a, give their contact information. Who helps us set up the automation? People like me help you set it up, but you could take training on it. You can get systems that pretty much have as much of it done for you. But what I will tell you is, no one can do this front end work. You, you shouldn't allow anyone to do this front end vision work for you, the ideal client work for you. You can work with ChatGPT to develop your ideas, but you really need to make sure that your ideal client is defined and that you've done. And then once that is, you can outsource setting up, getting, creating the offer, setting up the automation. There are people and Fiverr and Upworks that can actually set up the systems to be able to do the thing. All right, I'm going to, because I, I am a talker. So let me just show you an example and I want to break us out. So like this example for Ron, what's Rhonda, right? Rhonda, this is a how-to guide. And what I asked in this proc is to give me a collection of different types of offers. So it's not just going to be one type. So this is a how-to guide. I want you to ignore the hot takes for a second, but this is a comprehensive first timer selling plenty of trips, essential travel tips, visa information, right? So this would be good. I would cater this to you. So the name here is Columbia Basics for Advisors, starting with Columbia 101. So what this naturally does is anyone who is an advisor, the title speaks to them. The fact that they may be interested in doing Columbia, the title will speak to them. And then that sales page content would then continue the hook and also the way that you do the promotion. This is a local cuisine guide. This is a hidden gems itinerary, social media content idea. So again, the, this particular offer is speaking to your type of client. So if we were to change that from an advisor who's starting out to an experience who is looking for maybe signature group trips, the, the results are going to be different. Does that make sense? Okay. So the ideas, again, are dictated by two things, destination and how specific you are with your ideal client. I'm going to let us break out because I know that time is the best. It'll give us 10 minutes to do that. Do we have any questions? Because really what I want you to do is how many people are on? So let me, with such a limited time, would you guys like to just throw out ideas and I throw them in here? Would you guys like to do that instead of doing a breakout session? He's like, I can do that as well. I could, we could also open it up and you guys open up your guide and you guys play with it and ask me questions. We can do this however makes sense for you all. I want to be, but I want to make sure I'm respectful of the time. So let me know, how would you guys like to work the next 20 minutes?
So, yeah, thank you, Sunday. I think with uh, what Kristen's just said there and with my experience of these calls, I think often, yeah, like Kristen said, having your expertise. <laughs> I think otherwise we're all going to be in the breakout rooms. In this the case. No problem. All right. Do you guys all have the guide open? Uh, we'll do. Let me drop the link again. <clears throat> we have to. I just dropped it again. Um, what's the do we like copy and paste it or how do we do all yes. this? Well, what you're gonna do is in King I deleted something here. You're gonna take that the part that's in gray, and you're gonna go into Chat GPT, and you're just gonna start a new. We're gonna just start a new chat here and i don't know why i deleted this this is why you should not work at two o'clock in the morning but i had a part of this that i deleted uh here and i'm gonna add it back for you guys give me a second let me just add this back i don't know why i deleted it last this morning here what i want you to do is i want you to put your i don't know if this is back and give it to you uh, DL. so do we uh, do you say do we need to open chat gpt i'll well, I'll okay. eat it like, all right. Does everyone know how to access that? Does everybody know how to access? Anybody not know how to access it? I think some people may not. And you, would they have to set up and I've got it on mine, but I've got the like basic version, which yes. actually on this which... version will work. I, I haven't been on the basic version in a long time. I think then I don't know which, who's on the basic version. I don't know which model it goes up to. Mm, I'm on it and it's, what does it say? It just says chat GPT. Yeah. It doesn't have 4.0 on it? No, I can see the option to upgrade, but. Yeah, so I don't, I'm trying to think what the highest model on the free version is. Does it say chat GPT dash four on yours? No, it just says chat GPT. Great for everyday tasks. All right. Knowing which model, let me just tell you, give you guys a little synopsis of that. The free version is not using the latest um, language model. And what that just means technically is, is that you don't have to do as much prompting, as much um, uh, context setting, as much massaging on the latest model. So that's really the difference is just the, oh, my... Uh, says that I'm over, I can't paste the prompt in the um, chat. I wonder if it's worth picking a couple of members here and doing yeah. so case for yes. Well, I will, I'll put it in. We just did round in, so you'd like to give yeah. me an ideal client and I will um, put it in. I'm going to pick someone. So Nancy, yes, you'll need to create an account. You can create it with your Google account. Um, or give it a username, uh, email address, and password. Why don't we use Nancy, seeing as, because I think she's Nancy. not on there yet. It would be good for her. If you, Nancy, um... it's your, who's your ideal client? Oh. See to pick on you. Yeah. I love who your ideal client is. I can tell everyone. <laughs> but you say it better, so you say it. Do you remember... What you said in this time. Um, Nancy, if you tell Sunday. I what? think she's probably setting up her account. We can pick someone oh, else. Okay. To okay. I said you asked, do we need to pick a single destination for this plot prompt to really work? No. Like, I, let me just say this. If you're doing a destination that's not co-located, or is co-located, I say an area, so not necessarily a destination. So let's say you're looking at all of Northern Europe or Africa as a whole or Southern Africa or something like that. I definitely think you could put, pick an area if you want to do multiple destinations. What I say is test it out. See what kind of results that you get. There is no wrongness in this. The, what I really want to give you and empower you all to do is start to test out what your input is so that you can then get output if you i'm just gonna say if i just put best put an example in the chat i don't know if you want to use that all right 
And so, Anna. Happy that Beth, thank you. I'm going to put here. But before I do that, I'm just going to put women over 40 because I want to show you the difference between what you're going to get when you're not specific versus when you are specific, okay? All right, so you, I put women over 40 struggling with perimenopause symptoms that want to travel to VT. Is that Vermont or is that another place? Is VT yes, Vermont? it's Vermont. Yes. And write it out. I'm in the travel industry, but I'm so geographically challenged. Just like, it doesn't stand for another country, does it? Yeah. On winter weekend in the spring. All right. So I'm just going to put winter. I'm going to put women over 40 and I'm going to say USA because I want to see, I want you to see the difference between this versus when we, we are more specific. Okay. Can I ask a clarifying question? So you are not cutting and pasting into the ideal client and location thing like you showed in the previous example. You're just putting it at the bottom. That is right. Of your, okay. Okay. In the document, I, I yes. deleted it. So I added it back, which is I put ideal client equals that and destination equals that. And all you have to do okay. is copy that part. And then we can um, just do it after the equal sign. I don't know. What can I ask a clarifying question too? Is that does this only work on Chat GBT or can it be on Claude? Because I, I use Claude a lot. I mean, it can you it can work on it. Okay, it's Great. not designed just now. What I will say is I do Chat GBT for ideas, yep. um, idea generation, and then Claude for actual copy delivery of the copy. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay. So here, this is a guide for weekend get in every state, right? 50 estate. So this is what you get when it's general. And I don't know if your eyes are like why. Mine are really bad. Like, I don't know, triple. I don't know how to I don't know how to use the, the quad full bulls that I have. But anyway, here, so this is 50 escape to the US. Weekend Wonders, your U.S. Perfect Getaway. These are titles, but really this is a guide covers top rated weekend trips in every state. Here, comprehensive safety tips for solo travelers for our pre-trip planning. These are not bad, right? These are not bad. But let's take the same prongs and let's do it. Let's do another one here. And we're going to just open up ChatGPT again. And duplicate this so we can see. Do let's do a new one here, and then we're going to give it more context. We're going to say what you said. And where are you, Nancy? There you are. Here and the destination. You've already said that. I don't think we need to say it again, but I'm just going to just so be here. Now you see the difference, right? So this concept is a lot stronger, more focused on Vermont. Right. So this is the concept name is the Vermont Wellness Weekend, a guide to enjoy winter here. Again, you are specific about what you want. And furthermore, this has struggling with perimenopause symptoms. So here, hot tubs. I don't know that hot tubs for perimenopause would be good, but what? I mean, maybe in third menopause, like that sounds, it sounds really neat. So, so I will say when you get results like that, Tell like it's your crazy. Do you know what perimenopause is? That's like the worst thing in the world. But it's in the winter, so maybe it could be so bad. But anyway. The hot and cold therapy actually is really helpful for stimulating the vagus nerve and helps to calm the body. So it actually helps with stress reduction, which is what we want to do. In I'm not an expert in that, and you are. That actually is not a bad idea. But the it's also good context that you could give in your ideal client, right? Is somebody who does perimenopause and doesn't understand what's going on with their bodies or something like that. That would be additional context you could put in the ideal client section to even give you more of a more refined response. Does that make sense, Beth? Yes. All right. Okay. 
But now, so these are all your great examples. Now, if you don't like these 10, great thing, all you have to do is say, I don't like them. Give me some more or give us some additional context. And then you'll get another set of examples. Sunday, those also seem like great, like blog post ideas. Different because a blog post it doesn't necessarily go out to the client, but it might sit on just on your website. But but Karen, it, yeah, it can go out to the client. Right. It'll sit on your website, but you can still use it as an offer. You could still yeah. run an ad to get my latest article and you can position an email form in front of that before you send them to the web page. You could send them directly to the web page, track all the traffic that gets there through a pixel and still win. Like those are still, so blogs in and of itself are not good offers. They are actually really good offers. I like that you don't mean that an offer always has to be save $500 on a trip. An offer is actually an informational piece that shows clients your expertise in helping them. You just hit the nail on the nose. You should absolutely, for strangers, not be talking money. Yeah, because ever I never do that. <laughs> and so I... So when you started with offers, my brain went, oh, say it's, five, say it five ninety nine on a safari. Yeah. Not a, I am not a discounter. I am, I'm not a discounter of anything that we do. And so it's always going to be about positioning and adding, creating value in the way that you do your offers. Never will I be telling you to discount. And I personally will never be telling you to discount. Okay. All right. So. Your homework with five minutes left from today's session is I'm just going to point you guys through the rest of this, but your next step is to select the options or really have some heated conversation with your chat GPT or Claude or whichever conversational AI that you're using to come up with a list of ideas. What I don't want you to do is to get stuck and stay stuck in the ideation. Pick one because your goal is the, the speed to market. You want to get this idea out and done and in front of people to validate that it's something that people, that your target audience would be interested in. Because the worst thing that you could do is stay in your head. Talk about it, mull over it, think about it, and never release it because you're a marketer. I know you guys seek your travel advisors in the travel industry, but you're marketers. Because you can have great products, but if nobody sees or gets them, they will never know about your amazingness. So you've got to get these types of offers and people raising their hand, shaking hand and kissing more babies so that you can ultimately start more conversations with people in an automated fashion. All right. Each one of the prompts that as you go through this here is going to take you through each step. So the first one is you will come up with some ideas. You'll go back and forth, get your ideal list. I say transfer that to a spreadsheet. That's the reason why I'm a spreadsheet gal. So I transfer that to Google Sheets, copy it, pick one, and then based on the one that you pick, you'll go to step two. You'll put the idea that you pick. Step two, you'll run that prompt through. It will then create an outline for you that will create the outline for your content piece. So if it's a guide, a listicle, whatever one you pick, it'll create the outline for it. Now I'm going to use Beth as an example. I don't know anything about perimenopause except for that I'm in it and I don't know it, but she knows it and you're going to know your topic better than anyone else. So just make sure that the outline makes sense or is structured in the way that you want to present the information. This is really where I spend maybe about a good 10 to 15 minutes going through and be like, I don't really want to talk about that or I don't really want to present that. And so I'm having an educated conversation about my perspective and what I really want to present in that arena. And then step three is around you take that outline and you actually are able to create the content. This is whoever was talking. This is where I like Claude better than uh, ChatGPT. I like Claude to actually create outlines for step two and three. I'll use Claude for that. And then step, pretty much I'll use Claude for rest of the content. Step four is around the landing page. So what needs to be on the landing page to get somebody to be like, oh yeah, she had a post about this. 
yeah, I'm interested. So there needs to be continuity from the promotion of the thing to them actually getting to the information about the thing that you want to do, which is the sales page or landing form or whatever you're doing. It's the thing that says, give me the email address because this is going to be beneficial to you. That's, this prompt will take you through creating that content. And then the last thing is the actual email series. Now, in the case of Karen, or I think it was Karen who is, or whoever said that they're using the messenger, I think it was Janine, actually. So if you're using, if, let's say you're not doing email and you're using a message platform like WhatsApp, that would be a different prompt because there's a different, there's different stages that you need to create messages that you have to go back and forth using many chat or something like that. So this one is really designed for emails. And then the last thing is really, you got to promote the thing. Like you got to get it in front of people. And are you going to do that in social media? Are you going to run ads? Are you going to go into Facebook groups and make yourself valuable? Maybe you have a Facebook group. Are you going to grow a group? It's really about promoting that thing that you do. That's where the work is. Because once this funnel is done, once you learn this skill, that's it. Like you just do it over and over again. But the rest of your offer. So you just test until you consistently are getting the leads that you want for it. All right, I'm going to pause. I know that we are like, I went over because I didn't give you much questions. So <laughs> let me, I, I can stay on if you guys want, but hopefully this was helpful to you and it makes sense. This has been great Sunday. Uh, I think uh, it's been, yeah, super, super informative and um, lots there to take in. What I, everyone, people are asking about, whether it's with recorded yes it's being recorded and we will share the recording over on uh, on circle on the members portal and what i'd also like to suggest is for all of you that are on the call or even if you're watching the recording just to put in the comments in where it's saved under the resources section uh, once we've added it in there like any questions about it how you're getting on with it and we can continue the conversation and then yeah we're basically going to be running that we're doing the magic hours every month and if Sunday's okay with doing that, she's going to be leading them along with Katie Broadhurst when she's back from maternity as well. But yeah, it's we can continue the conversation. Um, and the other thing on that as well is, yeah, we're, we're, we're having, there'll be more opportunities for all of you to connect um, in your own kind of small groups. Um, I know there's the wellness and retreats call tomorrow. Again, it's that sort of thing where use those opportunities to continue these conversations and to learn together. So the, and then obviously if you want to take it further and you want to go faster, then you can hire Sunday and work with her directly and she can turbocharge whatever you're doing and probably get a lot of it done for you. I'm just reading the comments to see if I missed anything. So really, I, I think once Catherine shares out the prop, you guys have the guide. I am probably not so much in WhatsApp, but I'm definitely in Circle. So if you just tag me in that Circle on, it, is it going to be a thread or a, a post that gets done in Circle? Yeah. So we're on Circle. There, it, where, where we post the recording, there's a whole section where you can comment underneath there. Um, so I would suggest that we continue the conversation there. Yep. And just tag me if you have any questions about the prompt or anything like that. But really the key takeaway for you all to get whatever is in your head, just like Beth has this idea about what her services are, is start to create yourself. What is that kind of offer that will get the, the type of people that you're interested to raise their hand? Amazing. That would be your step one. Love it. Thank you so much. Awesome. It. It's great. That's awesome. meeting all of you ladies. I look forward to seeing you guys next month and listen for those who celebrate Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving this month. Yeah. I'm in the UK, but I celebrate it anyway. I think it's always great. To, I <laughs> celebrate everybody's holiday. Can we? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, and Sunday. Then, yeah, Sunday, just really share the great. recording with me. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. It'll take a while for it to download, so I'll share it out. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.